All right, our next speaker is uh, entitling her speech, Code, Debugging the Gender Gap. Robin Hauser is the director and producer of Code, Debugging the Gender Gap, a featured documentary about female and minority computer science engineers. Previously, she directed and produced the documentary, Running for Jim, about the inspiring story of high school running coach, Jim Tracy. Please welcome Robin Hauser. Thank you, Adam. All right, 500,000. That is the number of unfilled computer science-related jobs in the United States right now. Unfilled. By the year 2020, there will be over one million. Um, the reason is because we're missing half the population. We're missing women and we're missing people of color. Less than 18% of the population that works in computer science in the United States are women, and less than 10% are people of color. This is the face of tech. Gloria Steinem said that women have always been an equal part of the past, just not an equal part of history. And never is this more true than in technology. Ada Lovelace should be a household name. She actually wrote the first algorithm. She worked with Charles Babbage on the analytical engine. Most people don't know who she is. Grace Hopper, Admiral Grace Hopper, actually wrote the first computer science programming um, language. She came up with the idea of programming languages. Um, she also coined the term debugged when she was working on the Harvard Mark I, and she found a moth in the vacuum tube and had to clean the moth out and therefore debugged the machine and it started working again. <laughs> Interesting fact is that in the mid-80s, there were actually more women in computer science than there are now. And if you look closely, you'll see that in the year 2000, there were more women than there are now. So how can this be? I think one of the major culprits is stereotype, the, the stereotype of a programmer. Most people, when they think about a programmer, think about a hooded guy, dude, in his mid-20s, sitting in the basement, antisocial, drinking Red Bull, and eating stale pizza. Not very enticing for a young woman. <laughs> the second major culprit is the educational pipeline. We don't teach computer science in our schools. This is scary to me. For most kids, the first time you can take a computer science class is when you're a junior in high school. And yet, look at the numbers in 2012 of how many kids signed up for the advanced placement computer science class, 0.7%. And out of that 0.7%, only 15% were women and 8% were students of color. So what that means is then when you get to college, less than 12, so 57% of college graduates are women, and less than 12% of the computer scientists that are awarded degrees are women. Sexist workplace. In the sexist workplace, it's unbelievable egregious. This is probably one of the hardest things for me to understand when I was making this documentary. These are products of baby boomers, right? If the average age is 25 in tech right now, how can they be sexist? And yet the sexist workplace culture is real. So what do we need to do to solve this problem to fill the jobs if we don't want to just fill them with foreigners, which is what we're doing right now? We need to recruit more female role models. We need to, to change the stereotype of a coder. We need to make computer science mandatory in schools. And we need to integrate it into all the classrooms. You'll find teachers that say, well, what are we going to do? You know, get rid of ancient European history? Uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> But what we need to do is incorporate it into the schools. There's no reason you can't write a string of code that analyzes how many frogs had disformed livers when you're dissecting them in fifth grade, right? There's no reason that you can't write a string of, of code that tells you exactly how many time history has repeated itself in history class. It can be incorporated into all the classrooms. And we need to disrupt sexist workplace culture. Well, with a really good example of this was when I was just like, I'm done. And I walked downstairs and there's just like a line of dudes sitting back on this bench and watching two girls hula hoop. I get it, like I understand what's happening here, but it looks like a strip club and it's making me uncomfortable. 
But imagine that that's the case, you go to work. I grew up, my first job was in banking. So imagine going to work where there's a keg on tap, where there's a, you know, a bar, where there's all this sort of people come in and leave at any time of day. And then this is going down when you're trying to work. And if you're one of very few women, if you're one of two in a group of 35 programmers, it's uncomfortable. And so women don't stay in the business very long. There will be 1.4 million jobs by 2020 in the computing-related fields. Less than 29% of them are going to be filled by Americans, and less than 3% of that 29% are going to be women. I don't think software engineering is a meritocracy. Being excellent or being good at your job isn't enough if you're a woman in tech. The sort of phenomenon of the programmer has really interested me. Programmer. 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 It's hard to encourage more women to come into an environment that will sexually harass them and not fund them. As soon as a woman gets introduced, it's like blood in the water. When companies started putting these full diversity disclosure reports out there, it became very obvious, wow, there really is a problem. This is something that we need to be trying to address. Women were the pioneer programmers. They've been written out of history, unfortunately. Grace Hopper came up with the concept of real programming languages. Ha, coding's magic. I like coding because instead of us being consumers, we could be like a producer. In the same way that everyone should know a little bit about law and everyone should know a little bit about economics, you probably should know a little bit about computer science. Growing up, I was actually a, a system kid. I didn't know that I could learn how to code like so quickly. The reason that there's a gap is actually related to some really real structural factors. Girls aren't encouraged to pursue computer science. They're overlooked because, you know, it's the boys that are good at science and it's the boys that are taking apart computers at age nine. Most students have no exposure to programming. Computer science should be a requirement in all public schools. This is a Rosie the Riveter moment because the jobs are here and we don't have the workers to fill them. For the digital revolution, to truly be great. It can't just be for a certain set of people. I'm hopeful because I think that the tech industry could move the fastest. If we see the problem, we can debug it. This is our country, our cities, our communities, our children, our code. Code. Debugging the gender gap. Thank you very much.